Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be going over three Canadian dividend paying stocks that I'm going to be looking at buying throughout the month of April. Now, if you like this type of content, please subscribe to the channel, give me a big thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any thoughts on these stocks or you're looking at buying any other stocks, would love to hear from you guys in the comments. Okay. So the first stock that I'm looking at buying in April is actually a stock that is already a pretty big position for me. TD Bank, Toronto Dominion Bank trades on both the TSX and the New York Stock Exchange as well. This stock has gotten tied up in lots of the drama with the banks over the last month or so um, with some cash calls happening at Silicon Valley Bank and, and that kind of spread throughout the U.S. to a lesser extent. So we just look at the last one month on this stock, down about 11%, um, about $15, $20 billion has actually come off of the market value of TD Bank. The exposure that TD Bank has to U.S. banking is they do have an investment in um, Schwab, since I believe Schwab bought out TD Ameritrade. So they do own a percentage of Schwab, um, which is a brokerage that has kind of gotten brought up in terms of having long-term bonds uh, that, that they've bought with their assets, which is kind of similar to what happened at Silicon Valley Bank. But they've actually announced net inflows, not net outflow. So people are viewing Schwab as kind of like a safe haven to store their money in since it's a relatively big brokerage. So they should be okay, shouldn't really have any actual business operation impact from those decisions. The other area is First Horizon, which is an acquisition that they are trying to make right now. It is a regional bank. Um, so as that narrative and those values kind of got compressed on regional banks, um, if they were to buy it at the previous announced value, some people kind of gave the stock a bit of a haircut based off of that. But overall, I think this is a very high quality stock. You can get almost a 4.8% dividend. They have a very long history of increasing the dividend annually, um, almost 10%. Just looking a bit more into this company, they make money in a lot of different ways. Canadian personal and commercial banking, U.S. retail banking, wealth management, wholesale banking. They do have a lot of business in both Canada and the U.S., so they're well diversified geographically. They just bought Cowan in the U.S., and they're trying to close on First Horizon as well, which will grow their business about 10%. Um, second biggest bank in Canada based off of total assets, sixth biggest in North America. So this is a very large bank um, for those who haven't heard, <coughs> excuse me, heard of it. And they do have very diversified revenues too. As we look at those divisions, 7% of the business or of the earnings rather last quarter came from their investment in Charles Schwab, the dividends they get paid out. 30% from U.S. retail banking, 40% from Canadian banking, 10% from wholesale, 13% from wealth management. So pretty well diversified in, in that sense. This is kind of a look at just their growth plan. Um, you can kind of see uh, they've really been looking to acquire assets and accelerate their U.S. business, some strategic acquisitions in there. But the biggest, most notable thing that they're looking at doing, as I mentioned, was acquiring First Horizon. That deal is getting some pushback from U.S. Regula regulators. I'm kind of indifferent at this point. The value of these regional banks have gone down significantly. I think First Horizon is trading at a 30 or 40 percent discount versus what the buy price was. So if this deal gets ripped up, I think TD can use that capital in other ways um, to create value for shareholders. But if it goes through, even though it's probably more expensive than the market value would be otherwise, um, it could be a good opportunity to um, accelerate just their presence in, I believe, the, the southeast corner of the U.S. for the most part. And these acquisitions will probably be harder and harder to make with the increased scrutiny. So if they can get it done, um, I, I won't mind that either. This is a stock that over the long term, despite being down 11%, has performed really well. You kind of see some weakness based off of covid um, impacting uh, some of the economies they play in and, and loans, then interest rates going way down, impacting interest margins, and now just some of the headwinds around, uh, I don't want to call it a banking crisis, but some of the concerns in the banking industry. I think this is a good time to build a position, in my opinion. So that's what 
I'm doing in my portfolio, adding and adding and adding to the stock. They did about $9.50 in earnings per share last year. So they're currently trading at about nine times earnings, I believe. Um, and next year, they're probably going to do closer or sorry, last year they did about $9 in earnings per share. I think that in 2023, they're going to do closer to $10. So this stock's probably trading eight to nine times earnings for a company that's increased their dividends every year for decades on end, despite what's happening in the economy. And at least their business in Canada is essentially an oligopoly. It's not a lot of banks in Canada, and it's an industry that the government would very likely protect if anything dire happened to the space. So I think it's a good valuation. The risk reward makes sense to me. I'm getting a dividend to wait for it to bounce back. It'll likely get raised again this year like it has every other year I've been alive. So this is a stock that I'm looking at adding in April behind the weakness that we've seen here in the last month. The second stock that I'm looking at buying in April is Pimbina Pipeline. So this is a stock that I've actually never owned before, but I've always had on my watch list. And with the run up in kind of commodity and, and oil prices, this is a stock that really um, exploded really quickly. So went from $38 December 21 all the way up to over $50. And this is a company that is commoditized to a certain extent because they're moving oil and they're moving natural gas around um, via pipelines and, and, and storing it. So it, it's really a stock that shouldn't be moving too much pending any disaster or anything like that. So when I saw it jump up 30%, I was resistant and reluctant to jump in. Now with it down in the low 40s where it kind of was historically before, paying a 6% dividend yield, I think it could be a good opportunity for some income pays a monthly dividend so some good income to maybe start a position in it and if it goes down can average in a little bit but just looking at the stock a bit more before looking at the company just to look at how reliable the dividend stream's been like we can go back as far as we want here but even 10 years ago paying 14 15, 14 and a half cents a share then that went up to 15 cents a share up to 16 cents a share up to 17 cents then 18 cents then 19 cents, then 20 cents, 21 cents in 2020. That held for a couple years, so no cut during COVID. Um, and then I actually saw recently, I think they may have increased the dividend by um, a fraction of a cent as well. So this is a stock that since they've come to the public market for the most part, it seems like they've not only been holding this monthly dividend, but they've been growing it every year. So they get a 6% starting yield with some slight growth, a penny a year or so as well. Um, that's some really good cash flow as long as they're able to continue to execute. Looking at their business a little bit, sorry about that. I was actually surprised. I thought they did more business um, in a broader diverse uh, ge geographic space than, than this, but they're primarily BC, Alberta with where their pipelines are flowing to. It looks like they have some pipelines flowing down here um, over the border into the U.S., but despite not having a lot of geographical um, diversification, which is worth noting, um, they do play in a lot of different services. So conventional pipelines, oil sands, transmissions, fractionators, gas processing plants, gas infrastructure. I think they also do some stuff with natural gas. You look at this, um, th this slide here and you can kind of see 70% of their uh, business is in take or pay contract. So essentially this means they have prearranged amounts of gas and oil that have to flow through their pipelines and whether or not the reciprocator takes it or not, they still have to pay. So these are essentially regulated utilities to a certain extent and that's where they're deriving the vast majority of their cash flow and their profits from. So no matter what the environment is, they're pretty stable um, in terms of the cash flows that they're generating. And they're taking the free cash flow that they're not paying out to shareholders and investing it in incremental projects that they share at the, the end here on things that are going to continue to create need more and more streams of cash flow down the line. And that's how they're planning on continuing to increase that dividend. So can get in today at a 6% starting yield, a good history of dividend growth. Obviously, there's risks of, um, you know, if these types of of utilities are less relevant in the future, but I think that's a long way away. 
if a pipeline leak or explosion ever happens on one of their lines, that's obviously an inherent risk. Um, but for the most part, I also like the risk reward here. I like the um, cash generation that they give and the capital recycling back to the shareholder of 6% a year, half a percent a month. Um, so this is one that I'm going to be looking at getting into if the value um, stays where it is or, or dips even more from here, closer to $40 a share. And the third stock that I am looking at buying in April is a stock that I also already own, similar to TD, um, is RioCan REIT. So RioCan's trading at about $20 a share. I believe their net asset value is closer to $25 a share. <clears throat> That's how much their real estate is worth. So they're trading at about a 20% discount, paying over 5% dividend, also paid on a monthly basis. Just looking at this stock a bit, this is a stock that has very high quality assets, I'm not just reading it off the slide. Um, I, I pass by lots of their assets on a, on a daily basis. They're really in great downtown locations and lots of their assets, really great tenants, national tenants in spots that are super busy, um, high income areas for the most part. And I'm generalizing a bit here because they have 200 locations, give or take, but this is not, uh, a REIT that is is kind of not investing in future growth or not positioned for future growth. And with that being said, they're generating about $1.70 a share right now in earnings. So they're essentially trading at 12 times earnings at today's valuation. And that's with a lot of developments that are about to come online. The biggest one that's notable is the well. The well is a multi, um, how do I say it? Uh, um, I'm blanking on the word, a multi-purpose development site that has residential, rentals, office space, retail space, right in the center of downtown Toronto. I believe they own about a third of it. Um, another REIT called Allied owns another third and a private company owns the, the last third. But this was over a billion dollar project. It's cost them tons of money in, in CapEx every month. And that's on the on the verge of going to zero and turning into a cash producing asset, I think they already have some um, people in the space in terms of office tenants, retail space, but it's really going to start opening up in a really big way throughout 2023 and construction costs are going to essentially go to zero. It's going to go from being a huge cash, cash sucker from the last five years to finally being a cash producer. So not only can they take the money that they've been deploying on this project and invest it. In, in new projects, some of which they, they highlight um, in, in their presentation here, like I'm, I'll flip through it as I'm talking. Um, but in addition to um, that, they're going to have probably the biggest asset in their portfolio now, giving them a monthly paycheck. So this is a, a double win in terms of funds from operations for 2023 and beyond. And as they continue to allocate more and more money to other opportunities in their portfolio, we should see that actualize in future years as, as they look at growing their, their funds from operations and their dividends as well. Something that's good to know about um, this company is lots of the, the headlines we see about department stores shutting down and, and stuff like that doesn't pertain to companies like RioCan in, in a big way. They've kind of seen the trends in the retail space coming over the last decade. So their department store exposure as an example, like the Bay or Nordstrom, is like 0.1, under 1%, 4% in movies, um, 6% apparel uh, retailers. But they're really focused on things that have more staying power, whether that's gr grocery stores and pharmacies at 20% of their of their rent, specialty retailers like... Um, like Canadian Tire or whatever it may be, um, for 15%. Essential personal services at 14%. Value retailers like Dollarama and great tenants like that at 10%. You, all, you add all of that up and you're talking about 60% of the businesses and very defensible types of, of tenants and, and businesses that won't really get impacted very much, even if like another, fingers crossed, another pandemic or something like that ever came around. These tenants never missed a rent payment the last time around, according to their earnings calls. And they also have other very defensible 
segments of their their rent roll, whether it's seven percent quick service restaurants like McDonald's, KFC, Burger King, stuff like that. Um, other personal services, sit down restaurants have been doing pretty well over the last year as well. So that may have some headwind in a down market, but overall they're very well diversified. They're in very good locations and their tenant mix is very positive. It's not like um, current trends in, in the retail space are going to have a significant immediate impact in terms of the type of tenants that are losing um, right now and, and kind of going under and shredding, shredding locations. So this is a stock that I think at 12 times earnings is very well positioned for s s growth over time. Um, and I think they model it out, which I'm going to share with you guys as, as well and just talk to it. But this is their kind of target of return. They want to, oops, they want to increase funds from operations by five to seven percent a year. And that's on top of the ongoing dividend payment of four to five percent. Right now, you're getting over 5% dividend because the stock price has gone down. But going back to my last comment, I think that this company can very well achieve a 5% fund from operation Kager with the amount of development they're currently working on in their pipeline and the history that they've shown of been able, being able to translate those developments into funds from operations and into net asset value growth. So I think at 12 times earnings for the quality of these properties, you wouldn't be able to buy them on the open market or a business on the open market in real estate that's trading 12 times earnings for the type of flagship properties this company owns. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, to, and in the meantime, you get paid over 5% to, rate, to wait. Sorry. So this is one that I'll be adding to my position this month. These are the three stocks that I am excited to be adding to my positions this month, all of which yield... 4.8% plus, all of which has increased their dividend year over year over the last couple years and anticipated to do so moving forward. So I think these will continue to strengthen my portfolio, give me more investment opportunities every month as I get more capital deployed. And I'm interested to hear what you guys think of these stocks, what stocks you're buying this month. Let me know in the comments. If you like this type of content, please subscribe to the video and I will see you guys in the next one.